Joe with Joe Lee Farms. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here today with my good friend Santiago and hey, we're Joe. going to talk a little bit to you today. Santiago, welcome. Thanks so much, Joe. So we're going to talk to you today about how to buy a car in Ecuador. And more specifically today, we're going to talk about how to buy a used or secondhand car. Because um, it's very important that you know these things so that you stay out of trouble. Correct. All right, Santiago. Can you tell us why we should buy a second-hand car and not a new car? Well, mainly because um, <clears throat> most of people don't have the budget to buy a new car. Um, cars in Ecuador are pretty expensive. They are more expensive than the rest of the world. So, yeah, mainly for that reason. And the other reason is because um, the first years of a new car are high tax so double expensive so that's why people decide to go for a second-hand car when um, new cars come into this country they get a, an import tax basically 30 percent so that's uh, right on the top of what the cost already is exactly so buying used you don't pay the 30 percent and the matricula fee is lower much cheaper much cheaper okay so santiago where should people look to buy a car? Well, you have different places to buy a car. Depends where you are. Um, some people decide to go all the way to Quito. Uh, some some people um, look through in marketplace. Some other people just if they see a sign, se vende for sale sign on a car that the car that they like, they write the number, then they call. Um, yeah, then other people go to the mar car market on a Saturday and Sunday in Loja. Obviously for people that live in Loja. Yeah, so. And that's, uh, that's how I bought my first car here. I bought a secondhand car and I looked on Facebook Marketplace and uh, that's, that's always a great place to start. We used to have a thing here called OLX and, but no more, it's not, they're not uh, active here Correct. in Ecuador anymore. Forgot uh, also you have a lot of uh, car dealers in Loja. Um, not the brand, right? It's just a car dealer when you, you, you don't have time, you want to sell your car, you don't have time to sell it. Just drive in there, you leave your car there with the keys, you, you tell them your price and so there you have a lot of choice too. So it's another option. You have few options. So a lot of consignment car lots we would call them in the US. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So um, what car is good to buy? What should people look at? Well, it's a very good question actually because uh, number one, you should you should get a commercial brand, and with commercial I mean a brand that has a representation in Ecuador. So don't get a car that has no longer or never had a represent representation in Ecuador because. Um, once you buy the car and you need car parts, you're gonna struggle. And then you have to import the, those parts from China, the States or Japan. And you don't want that. So get a commercial car. Second, get a car that's suitable for where you live. All right. You might like a car. You want this kind of car, but the car is not going to get you home. So don't get a car get the car you actually need, all right? For example, a 4x4, if you live in the mountains, get a 4x4, not an all-wheel drive, but a 4x4, it's a different. I will tell you later about that. Um, yes, if you have a family, get a bigger car, a three, three uh, row seats car, uh, four door cars. Don't get the two door cars, it's not comfortable. Just get something that's comfortable for you. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, of great brands here in the U.S., uh, I mean, here in Ecuador, that you're familiar with in the U.S., but there's a lot of models here that you're not familiar with in, from the U.S. Correct. So, um, Absolutely. here, what would you say are some good cars like the, uh, the Chevy D-Max? Well, <clears throat> let's talk about brands. And non-brand is a bad brand, okay? There are all good brands, but it depends where you are. If we're here, if you, have, if you get the wrong brand, you're gonna 
have problems later on. Anyway, um, I could recommend you, for example, Toyota. It's a very good brand and they have representation here. And you can walk in in the dealer and get any part. Yes, they're expensive, but you can get the part. Plus, you can actually go so, uh, somewhere else and find uh, alternative parts. So aftermarket parts, which are much, much cheaper too. So you have option. Uh, if you go to Chevrolet, it's the same story. You have a lot of backup. So you will get original parts, alternative parts. That's okay. Uh, Kia, Hyundai, there are brands that have a lot of coverage too. If you step away from those brands, you need to do some research. If you can find parts in the shops, if or maybe not, especially especially older, how older the car is, how more um, chance you have that those parts will be discontinued. So be careful with that. It's uh, number one is brand, and yeah, number two a model because some models. Let's say you have this model from Chevrolet, but this model came in from the States um, 30 years ago and not many of them came in Ecuador. You won't find parts for it. Even if it's the right brand, you still have the wrong model. So find the right brand and find the right model that you have enough coverage of parts. Because last thing you want is to you need this part and you don't have it. You cannot find it. You need to call mm. in the States or again, Japan, wherever, and wait for three months and have your car park it in the, in the mechanic or in your garden. And the shipping and taxes to get those parts exactly. here. And they have uh, three months useless car sitting there, not doing anything. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, Santiago, a lot of people ask me about well, can I ship my car from the U.S. to Ecuador? Yes and no. I always tell them, don't do it. <laughs> that would be my recommendation too. Don't do it. It's a mess. Firstly, it can only be up to two or, th um, two or three years old. So new, let's say new. It has to be uh, pretty much new. And you have to deal with the cost of the aduana, the container, the shipping cost the import taxes and doesn't it have to come to a dealer and the dealer and, gets some money <laughs> and once it's and that's once it's an equal car you still need to do the matricula what we're going to talk about today and that's a pain that's a pain i mean it's already hard enough for people for example um they had an accident and they have to change their engine or the engine is done completely done you cannot overhaul it anymore and they need to change an engine Whew. it's a mess it's those serial a numbers mess. from the engine and from the frame if they don't match they're not going to give you a matricula and you have no. to go through a lot of problems basically to get the car registered correct so it's actually like, um, it's on purpose, like, yeah, bring it here. But once you have it here, we're going to give you a lot of trouble that you cannot use your own car here. So the answer is don't do, don't it. do it. Yeah, I wouldn't don't recommend do it. it. <laughs> All right, Santiago. So um, can you tell us what is the buying process? You know, in the U.S., we're, we're familiar. We, we all know how we buy a car there. But what about here? What's the buying process? All right, let's say you found a car. All right, let's say, let's give an example. You are in the car market my first thing i would do if you don't speak spanish is to take a friend that speaks spanish with you to this um, car market or if you found it through um, marketplace or however you found it you are there at the car take a friend with you okay take a friend that speaks spanish all right, let's say you are there, you found the car, you like the car, it's the car you need, it's the right brand, it's the right model. Uh, <clears throat> it's around in your budget. All right. Um, <clears throat> first thing you have to do is, this is just a random plate, it's not, it's not a real one. You check the number, all right, the license plate, I hope it's it. 
check it in your cell phone online and um, you probably have internet on your cell phone you go on a web page i'm going to leave so they can check it and you put this number in that's a fast search okay that's the number one thing you have to do and you check sorry in and the results are going to be um <clears throat> number one if the car appears in the system if that number plate doesn't appear in the system forget it walk away from it okay there's something That's fishy going on and number two you can see there how much it owns all right so i can own um maybe they didn't do the last year matricula didn't pay the but it, it's it's okay but at least you know okay and you ask hey it's up to date and to say no it's it, or to say yes it's up to date you, you know it they are lying okay you step away from these people but to say yes but we need to sell our car it's uh, it owes some money and it's okay let's go to the next step all right the next step is uh, to ask their the matricula and the matricula get it very quick for you is this one all right this is the matricula here you have the owner's name and you have to ask about where the owner or are you the owner okay and maybe he said no i'm i'm the reseller it's fine could be okay because some people don't have time to sell it so to send somebody else so it's fine but you can ask is this person going to be there for the negotiations or is going to be there at least for signing so it's going to say absolutely so once the next step is ask the cedulas that's their uh, equatorian id so with their cedulas all right you're going to see at the back side and you're going to see if they're married if they're married probably in most of cases the wife has to s sign too all right they both have to be agreed next thing is that you actually go online again and you go to the municipality in loja again if you're in loja i'm talking about loja right now should be the same if you're in cuenca or you're in quito wherever but if you're in loja you have to check if they owe anything in the loja municipality all right if they owe anything then you have to tell them can you play pay your taxes of the property taxes or even if they owe water if they have water from the municipality if they live in loja they have speeding tickets some kind of ticket yes they have to have those paid they have to pay it if not you're not going to be you're going to be able to buy the car to do the notary the notary stuff but you are not going to be able to do the matricula in your name you're not going to do unless it's paid all right that's another link i'm gonna that you can add the other thing then is next is that you go to the ant agencia nacional de transito website and then you check again two things the license plate if they have tickets all right and their cedula again if they have personal traffic tickets so the, in ecuador they can put tickets on the license plate and on your cedula if they don't owe anything on your cedula on their cedula both both uh, sellers or whoever is if it's single then he has just one sign so it's just him but basically they have to be free of taxes free of speed tickets or Fines whatever yeah all right yeah and and so and when they pull you over you know we we don't really police don't just randomly pull you over here hardly ever at all but we do have traffic stops where the what we call the transito um the transit police will have a road block and they're checking IDs or they're checking, make sure your taxes are paid on the car. And so you need to show them, not necessarily the green card, but you need, you'll need to show them this white card. Yes. Now, we always take ours and have it's them the laminated. Same. It's same the same card, yeah. It's just a fold and two. So we always have them laminated so they stay in good, clean condition. Um, and so this is what you'll need to show them at a yes. traffic stop if they ask. Plus, 
your matricula plus your driver's license. Yes. Absolutely. I almost never get asked for the green card. I think I got asked maybe one time. But, but yeah, driver's license, and they're going to want to see this That's because they like you. They like me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So now, um, like my new car came with a sticker on the windshield, so it shows that I'm registered for this year. Um, but not all cars will have that. And so, yeah, this is the sticker. Mine's a little different, but that's it, yeah. And so, um, you know, usually they see that sticker and they don't bother asking you for the card, but they might. So you need to have it in the car. I always make a copy for my file in the house in case something should happen to this one. I have an extra one. And I think that um, uh, you need to be careful. If you go to Peru, before you can enter Peru, they're going to want to see the physical cards. And yeah. your driver's license. And your driver's license. Yes. Yeah. Depends where you are. You're going to get this one too. The sticker. But this is not so important as this. If yeah. you fail with this, they can even take your car away. So yeah, have this. I will explain you how to get this, by the way. So if you do get pulled over and your car is not registered, they could tow your car right then, couldn't they? Absolutely. Yeah. Or also, if you don't have a driver's license, they could tow your car. Yeah. So yeah you, if you, they you, really want to be the strict traffic guy, then yes. I'll say um, I've heard $20 goes a long ways. That's just what I've yeah. heard. Um, I've never done that. You prefer to have everything legal than going that in, in that way. I mean, if it, you, you really need to be careful with that because if you have the wrong guy, you have, you're in jail. You end up in jail. You By the way, driving jail, without a license, I mean, forgetting the license is one thing, but not having a license is another thing. Right? And you could have a copy of it on your cell phone. Yeah, a picture. Well, <clears throat> there is a system where you can actually um, uh, you go to the INTA if you already have a equestrian driver's license you go to the ENT in Loja again we're in Loja but you have this in everywhere in Cuenca and Quito everywhere in Ecuador you go to your ENT and you ask for a digital one this is a this is free okay it doesn't cost anything so <clears throat> for example you don't want to take your real driver's license somewhere you have your driver's license in your cell phone Mm -hmm. And if they stop you, you just show it, all right? Fantastic. And it's, it's much easier, yes. Much easier. Yes. So, um, yes. you Continue. want to talk about the buying process? And, yes, but um, <clears throat> the next, uh, actually going back to... How to buy? To what to check on the car before you buy it is we were on the cellulas, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Next thing you have to do is you go to again with the matricula and you go to your nearest matriculation uh, center. All right. Centro de matriculación vehicular in Spanish, but let's call it just the matricula place for easy. <clears throat> you take the matricula place of this um, seller. You, probably you go with them, right? So you, they are not going to give you their, their papers and just go. No, no. You go with the car. You go with them. And you go and you follow the line where it says information and you give them this and you ask them is this car has there any restriction for selling and does it has any kind of problem so you, you have cases that they're going to say it has no problem but it has a restriction for selling because the owner didn't pay something all right, so to put the restriction, you can't sell your car. So then, uh, <clears throat> then it's up to you if you want to walk away from that deal, or maybe the seller says, "Yeah, it's only one hundred dollars I have to pay. I'm going to pay it now, and then it's clean." All right, if you really like the car, you wait for it, let them pay. You come back. Is it off the system? Yes or no? It's still there. You, won't, you don't lose your time anymore. But it's off the system then it's clean green light then you go to the next level and the next level is um, you have to ask the people in the matricula place to check the frame number the engine number 
and the and the body number okay if this is very important this is a very important step all right yes i know sometimes your mechanic can do it but you're better off doing it in the place all right yeah. you're there you're checking this out so you might do it so <clears throat> perhaps in a day that they're full on they will say come back later come tomorrow back it's equal you know but if you can friendly ask him and they say okay let's fold that line and we will check it just do it do it it's very important to do that yeah. there's a high percentage of cars in Ecuador at storm cars so you you don't want to do that you don't want to buy one of those cars all right so and what they are going to do is check the numbers if they have not been if they're not being changed or not being manipulated and if they say fine then you can go to the next level it, it's getting long but you want to do this because uh, you want to make sure your the car you're buying is okay enough <clears throat> after this you go to a to a frame guy i call it frame guy it's a shop where to do frame and body work so why would you go to a frame guy mm -hmm. well this is very important because in ecuador we don't have a history we don't have a history of the car for example if it had an accident you, you wouldn't know that all right yeah in the u.s there's uh there's websites you go to and all those accidents are recorded exactly you can tell we don't have that here exactly exactly most of accidents here is like let's let's agree something very quick before the police go and let's walk away yes yes anyway you go to a frame guy all right and he will check for you if it had any major accidents or any major crash that's been fixed or not been fixed at all all right or fixed improperly exactly he will check the frame and the body so if something is wrong there if he said this had a major accident step away from it okay that's a deal breaker okay that's a lot alert so don't do it don't buy the car if you had a small something small that you can fix for a for little money and just, there's no problem with the frame it's just on this corner yeah, yeah you can do it just add it on the list <clears throat> you go out you you go out of the frame guy and then next step is you go to a mechanic all right very important if uh, if the car has a computer then you scan it uh the mechanic he, he has to check the engine he has to check the differentials differential or differentials if it's four by four he will have two differentials he will check the gearbox or gearboxes in case of four by four um, he can check the brakes the exhaust well mechanics are no wizards he is not going to know what happened before with the car but he will do its best to see what he can find and if he's a good mechanic he has a little machine he plugs into the car and it'll tell you if it's producing codes you know exactly. codes that are problems and so um if there's no codes producing maybe it's okay exactly that's why i meant with scanning yeah uh-huh so <clears throat> if the, the mechanic will make you a list of this is wrong this part has to be changed this is all right and then again with that list go to the um to the where to sell parts to the shop ask how much they have how much it's going to cost and if they have the parts all right if they don't have any of those parts and deal breaker again mm. if they have the parts and it's going to be like a bill of two thousand dollars all right okay then you use that list later on for the nego final negotiations like let's say the the first price was eight thousand dollars but now with this list you say oh, okay look at all this stuff i'm going to spend two thousand dollars the seller might come a little bit down with with the, with the price yeah mm -hmm. and let me say something about parts um here in ecuador we talked a little bit about parts um in uh, loja there's a street there called dsc ocho de novembre or uh, the 18th of November in English. 
And so on that street, there's probably, I don't know, a hundred parts stores or more. I mean, there's yeah. a lot. It's 18 de noviembre, Quito and uh, Jose Felix. Yeah. All those, those streets have all uh, shops where you can buy parts. You do need to identify your um, the shop that sells the brand, the parts for your car. Not all sell, so maybe you're going to end up with two or three shops. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of uh, auto parts stores here. And, and Santiago's mm -hmm. right. Sometimes it's... Um, my car was, my used car was imported in through Quito and um, the windshield wipers were hard to find. And I finally found the windshield wipers at a place in Loja, but I had to go to about 12 places before I found them. Yeah, Ford, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> right, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so um, what's the next step? Yeah, there's one more thing I need to mention before. Um, so you, if you followed all the steps, is um, I actually forgot this. There has to be rule number one: is uh, when you buy a car here in Ecuador, is that you want to spend so much as possible in buying the car. Okay. If you if you have a budget of five thousand dollars, just wait and get more money together and spend more money on buying the car, okay? Yeah, $5,000 here in Ecuador on a used car, you can't buy much for less than $5,000. Yes. There's just, there's just nothing available that's worth buying. And I'm just gonna explain to you exactly why. Because following, at least following the logical way, how less money you spent in a car, how older the car is, how more owners it had, how more trouble you're going to have, all right? Because people here in general do not maintain their car very well, okay? Maybe because they don't know, maybe because um, they don't have the time, they don't have the money, but they don't maintain it well, okay? I'm not saying all of them, all right? But if it if your car has had 10 owners before and nine owners did a good job, but this one owner had it for five years and he didn't do any maintenance, you are going to have to do it for yourself and you're going to spend money, t time, your energy, you see? So... <clears throat> and, and proof of that is Every day when I drive in Ecuador, I see cars with brake lights out, either one or both, and, you know, the one yes. headlight's out, yeah. and they just don't replace them. They just yes. let it go. You have even people that don't even know that, for, that they have to change their oil from, from their gearbox or from their uh, differential, differentials and 4x4. Four four. They're on years and years with the same oil, and then all those bearings sometimes are going to... Let go. And, and yeah, and sometimes you have this bad luck that happens to you. Yeah, that's so, not good. So, yes, yeah, so I spent so much as possible in a, in a used car. So, if you have $5,000, don't do it. So Wait to I'm get gonna, more money. I'm going to stop you here just a second. So, what's happened is the wind started blowing and the tree above us has blossoms that are falling on us right now. So that's what you're seeing. It's not snow. <laughs> uh, all right. So what's the next step? Um, uh, let's say I bought the car. Um, oh, yeah. The next step would be what's the buying process. Right? Yeah. So you agreed on the price. You, detect, you identify this is the perfect car for you. It's a car that you want, need. You, you went, you, ch you checked everything out. This car is okay, you, whatever. So, <clears throat> next step is you identify a notary, all right, where you want to do the buying process. And it's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, the sellers have to take their cedula, their matricula, or, or, or whatever pa uh, paperwork they have. Don't forget the key of the car. 
and take the car, park it somewhere close by. And um, <clears throat> as a buyer, you have to take your passport or take your cedula if you already have one. And the money. You have to take the money, obviously. Because most cases, uh, they sign and you pay them, right? Yeah. Unless it's a more expensive car and you don't want to walk around with uh, too much... Um, much cash so then you can um, agree on a, on a transfer that work to checks no not much anymore more transfer cash or transfer and this you sign the papers because in the notary they will build the contract they sign you sign give them the money and you walk away as the owner of the car all right <clears throat> again don't forget Take a friend with you that speaks Spanish, all right, all the time. The next step on this um, buying process is that you go to the bank, all right. In the bank, you're going to have an IRS, S-A-R-I, S-R-I, um, tax, transfer tax, so much money in general, and you pay in the bank. Once you pay that one, then you can make your car ready. Sorry, I forgot. When you walk out of the notary, you go with your key to your car straight away and you drive it away to your home or whatever. Anyway, after that, you pay the bank and then you make your car ready for the inspection. The matricula place, all right? Now, let me warn you. Um, this process at the matricula place, when you go to take your newly bought purchased car, and you go there, it's going to take two days. And um, you need to smile, and you need to appreciate the fact that it takes two days. If you um, become irritated with any of the employees there, it may take you three days. So um, be nice, smile a lot, and again, having someone who speaks Spanish with you really helps the process and uh, makes it a little easier. Absolutely true. Anyway. What do I mean with get your car ready is before you go to the matricula, you want to go early, by the way, very early. They open at 8, you want to be there at 6.37, already phone line. Depends, the middle of the month is probably when they have less people. Um, sometimes starting the month, I don't know, it's hard to say. Anyway, you want to make your car ready. For, um, you have to have good tires on it. Uh, you have to have uh, two triangles, triangles, uh, fire extender. Your spare tire needs to be fine, in perfect condition. You have to have a SOS, SOS kit with alcohol in. Your, your, um, you have to have a jack. You have to have this tool to open the bolts of the tires if you want to change a tire, middle of the road. Um, your lights uh, cannot be white lights, cannot be uh, xenon lights or uh, none of it. Um, <clears throat> if you have fog lights, you're allowed to have two, but under the hood level, okay? If you have uh, extra horns or these strong horns, take them off just to pass inspection. Um, yeah, that's, uh, they, they check all that. So you go there, you follow the line. There are many lines to follow. Yes, you're going to be there a while. Yes, Joe knows. Um, <clears throat> but the first thing, once you have your ticket, to check first your paperwork, to give you a ticket, and you go first to check the frame number, the engine number. You remember I said you have to do that before? Well, that's the first thing when you buy a car, a second-hand car, in that place, they're going to check those numbers, the body number, the, the frame number, and the engine number, okay? That's the first thing they, have, they are going to do in your car, okay? They call it impronta. That's a kind of a scotch that they put with the color and take it out and they register it on your name. And, but if something is wrong with that number, you're, you're, you're done, all right? You cannot pass the matricula. No, anyway, not the legal way. All right, so that's why you have to check it before buying the car. All right, once they did the number thing, then you can go through the fold the line for the machines. 
all right? And the machines, they check the smoke, the sound of your exhaust, and the lights, if there are, the lights are aligned, the brakes and the suspension, they all check it, yes. Um, <clears throat> once it's out of the machine, before that you paid um, um, rodaje, it's not much money, and you paid uh, revision, which is very cheap actually. And once you have done all of that, then next day you should have this one on your name, okay? And you pay this one too, it's like $25. And this one is valid for five years. And this one, they're going to return you with the old ex-owner's name. It's, it's standard, okay? It's standard, that's normal. Because next year when you go to do it again, yes, you have to do it every year. And only the frame, the frame number and the engine number that you don't do, you do that every five years. When this one, this one is five years valid. Every five years, you, they check those numbers again and they give you a new one. But every year you go through the machines, again, depends where you are. You might live in a place where you're far away of the city and they have their own small matricula place. They don't have the machines, but they still do the inspection, kind of. Like in Catamayo. Exactly. Yes. yes. So this one will change then to your name. This one is every year, and this one is every five years, by the way. But you have to have both in your car always, okay? So, uh, yes, after two days, you go back and you, you have it. And you are there, the 100% owner of the car and I'm, I'm serious about this being nice and smiling because uh, a friend of mine that moved here um, got upset with him and yeah they made him come back a third day made him pull off a front tire they made him take it and get it washed and and they made his life difficult uh, because he was not being polite and um, yes yes you know courtesy goes a long ways true and also true there are some signs saying wash your car before coming here but when they know you, you're nice and you didn't wash your car and it's okay, they will let you do it. But if, yeah, if you don't go, if you're not very nice, they're going to say everything as possible to make it so hard as possible for you. Including go wash your, hand, wash your car and losing two hours. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, um, so we talked about what happens next year. That you have to go back and. Have oh yeah, next year. Yes. Okay. So let me very quick explain you uh, with this. All right. This number plate. Let me give you some information. This the first number. Sorry, the first letter is where the car is from, where the original uh, car dealer uh, sold this car. All right, so for example, here is an O, it means it's from El Oro, okay? And these, uh, are, these, are, these are provinces within Ecuador. Correct. So if you see an L, Loja. If you see a um, P, it will be Quito, Pichincha. All right, Z, Zamora. So Cuenca will be A from Azuay, province of Azuay. Cuenca is in Azuay. So the second letter is actually... Um, well, what type of car this is? So a C is a um, particular car, okay? Now, <clears throat> the important thing here is with your matricula is, for example, the five. And the five is, uh, is according to the month, but they start the February, okay? February would be one. one so normally five would be May, but because they start on February, so June, so this car has to go in June to the matricula place, uh -huh, all right? Yeah. But you can see it the other way. You have up to June to do this, okay? To the 30th of June to do this. But believe me, you don't want to go the last month, the last day of the month, all mm -hmm. right? It will be packed up. It will be... Anyway, so I want to explain you very quick something is if you bought the car in February, let's say, you have only one month to do the matricula from the date that you signed. And that year, you don't have to go 
that month anymore okay you have let's say February I bought this car in February 2023 in uh, June 23 I don't have to go back I have to go June 24 all right now you can go before the first week of every month you can you can do it in advance if you for example in my car I have to go in in uh, June but I do it in um, in May no I do it in January actually I already oh, did it oh. I do it every the third week of January because there's two first weeks they don't have system and the third week as soon they activate the system you can go and I go I like to go in January then I'm off it the whole year and so even though it's not due till May you can go in January and then you still get a full year from May to May. Still you have a full year. Very good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, you can I like do that. it in front. Uh-huh. Excellent. So, Santiago, we talk about it, the need for having someone who speaks Spanish to go with you and help you, etc. Have you helped people in this process? Have you helped people buy oh, yeah. cars? Many, many times I have uh, done that. Now, <clears throat> Doing this is not my main job, as you know, I'm a realtor here, I, I work in real estate, but this is like a hobby for me. Mm -hmm. So yes, I help a lot of people with this. So Santiago, um, can you tell people about your channel? Sure, sure. So I'm building it four by mainly for four by four channel. Uh, I'm going to try to cover lots of stuff like... Um, um, Let's say there's an event or an adventure, so I'm going to go up and shoot uh, or shooting interviews, um, tips for people like how to drive a 4x4, even tips about uh, how to drive an automatic car through the mountains, because you would be surprised how many people don't know how, how to drive an automatic car through the mountains. Um, yes, um, I don't know, maybe interviews with somebody who has a very fancy 4x4, see what mods, uh, modifications he has done to it. Uh, yeah, everything related to to that adventure skin. Um, uh, maybe uh, shooting a video with the car being rescued. Um, yes, but also while we are at the mountains um, doing some camping, we can cover some uh, photography of birds, of a... Uh, nature cool. so lots of stuff lots and, and of what's stuff. the name of your youtube channel it's uh traction por cuatro or in english it's traction four by, by four yeah traction by four yeah. yes it's uh, and his his youtube channel will be in spanish but i yeah. hope that you'll go check it out i'll leave a link to it in the description box correct there. correct fantastic any last minute tips or anything for folks yes i do have some tips um when you buy the this when you buy the car um, you probably are going to forget it there are many things you have to remember so you won't remember this is uh, download the the user's manual of your car okay it's very important because you want to maintain your car well and unless you tell the mechanic what to do he won't do it so you can pretty much find a user's manual of every single car in the world in English. So downloaded it or buy it from Amazon or whoever. If it's in the car, it's wow, you're lucky. But I don't know why, but most people take it out. You probably you won't find the, the, the user's manual. So have it, have it look, read it. The other tip is um, make sure if you go for gas, because you have diesel, if you have gasoline, if you go for a gas, uh, car uh, make sure that you can run it on the we have two gasolines here in Ecuador is extra with now calls Eco País and Super which so would be a regular and a premium in the US correct and some cars uh, don't allow you to fill them with extra or Eco País only premium which is super and for some people it could be a deal breaker because it's much more money to spend. Yeah. Like right now, it's uh, two dollars more. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably two dollars forty right now today, still 
for extra and it's four forty. Depends where you are. It can go up to five dollars the super. So yeah. it's a lot of money in gasoline, so be careful on that. And another tip is uh, buy a car that you're comfortable with. And I mean, in this case, I am talking about uh, manual versus automatic car, okay? I know there are not many automatic cars in Ecuador. Probably most of the new cars are coming in are more automatic, but 90% of the secondhand cars are manual. So, but if you are used to drive an automatic car, just spend more time in finding one and get yourself an automatic car. Don't buy a manual. I have seen a lot of people from the States, from Canada, from everywhere, buying a manual car just because they didn't find an automatic or, or the rule here is get a manual. It's not true. There's nothing wrong with the automatic car. Automatic car is as good as a manual car and it's in some ways even better, which I'm going to cover in my YouTube channel. Okay. Anyway, get, if you're used to automatic car, get your automatic car. Don't struggle with a manual car. Okay. Especially on the side of a mountain in the mud somewhere. No, I, I know, mm. no, I know people that hate their car. They hate the car. They don't want to drive the car because they don't like to drive a manual so why would you buy a manual if you if you are used to driving you uh, automatic car i know there are people that say i can learn and they do learn oh, fine but for those people that don't want to learn they're comfortable with automatic car get an automatic car and we were very fortunate when we bought our used car we wanted an suv we wanted an automatic but we also wanted four-wheel drive um that's a, a difficult combination but we found it and um you know, we looked at quite a few that were manual, or that were automatic transmissions, and we settled on the one that we bought, and we enjoyed it. Um, we later realized we really don't need four-wheel drive because we're just not going in areas that we really need it. You and I were out yesterday Correct. in a pretty muddy road, and my car did fine. So, yeah. All right. Well, Santiago, I think we could do a whole nother video on how to choose the proper mechanic. And uh, True. that's, yeah, uh, that's a, a process in the U.S. It's a process here. Yes. It's no different. Um, finding a good mechanic is a challenge. Yeah, it is a challenge because uh, if you go to the States to a mechanic, you have all in one. But here in Ecuador, especially here in Loja, let's say if you come by Loja, we're here, everything is separate, okay? You have... a you have um, expert in uh, exhaust. Okay, exhaust is one place. Tires is another place. Brakes is another place. Uh, frame, body, paint is another Electrical place. Electrical problem. Electrical is yeah. another place. It's it's all in another place. They're all separate. So you need to spend some time in finding all these places. Too. But and once we'll, you get them, you will be happy. We'll make a video specifically about all of that. I think that'll take a, a good half hour to talk about those things. So, yeah. Santiago, thank you so much for coming and doing this today and helping educate people so they can make the right decision exactly. um, when they look to buy a car. So we appreciate your watching this video all the way to the end. God bless you. Thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you next time.